Hi, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to video two of three in a series that I'm focusing all about the serve and volley, giving you the most important things that need to be present for you to be as successful as possible using the serve and volley, either in singles or doubles. If you haven't seen video one, go watch that first, please. I talk about transitioning forwards from the serve as quickly, balanced, and effectively as possible. And in this video, we're gonna talk about something different. Let's go ahead and go right to the video of Zimanich, who's our study here. And I'll play through the video that we're using as an example. And this is him serving and volleying versus Novak Djokovic in a practice session in Cincinnati. So this is the clip that we're using to learn all about the serve and volley. And in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on balancing yourself once you do transition forwards. In video one, we worked, worked our way all the way up to about here. Now, moving forwards, it is vital as you start to transition towards the net that you balance yourself as the ball is hit by your opponent. It is absolutely essential because at this point in time, Djokovic could hit a ball past Zimanich to the right, to his right, could try to hit past him to the left, could drive it right at his body, in which case Zimanich would try to move out of the way and hit an effective volley, or a lob is possible as well. And when you at home serve in volley, all of those possibilities are on the table as well. And so if you make the mistake, which is very common, of just trying to get in as close as you can before the ball gets to your side of the courts, you will find yourself really struggling to hit an effective shot. So let's see how Zimanich does this exactly. This is his touching down after the serve. And then he makes an aggressive stride, one, two strides forwards. And now watch as he comes up, spreads his feet apart, and gets on the balls of his feet. And I'm going to stop the video right here. And look at the position his body is in. If we didn't know that he was quickly and aggressively transitioning forwards, if we didn't know that this was within a serve and volley, it'd be really tough to tell. I mean, he's just in a calm, cool, collected, balanced position here. You know, it looks like he's just kind of hanging out back here in no man's land and just kind of waiting for the next ball to, to be fed or, or whatever. It doesn't look like he's quickly transitioning towards the net. And that's excellent, excellent balance from Zimanich. And that's what you should be trying to achieve at home. Now, I'm not going to get into the exact specifics of how to time your split step, but the last point I do want to make is that the split step should not be executed in a specific place on the court. Somebody asked in response to video one in this series, where should I split step? And where should I make my split step? It is not where, but when. Do not, so many recreational players make this mistake, do not pick out a spot on the court and say, all right, I'm going to serve and volley and I'm going to make it all the way into the service line. I'm going to split step there. Or, okay, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to split step in the middle of no man's land to make sure that I'm ready. Do not do that. It's all about when, meaning when the ball gets to your opponent, the returner, that is when you want to execute the split step. And however far in you happen to be, when the ball gets to the returner, that's where you're going to split step, period. So it's not where, where you split step is gonna vary depending on how fast you serve, how quickly you move in, how close the returner is to the net, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of variables. So don't try to judge it based on where, but when. If you have more questions about that specifically, having to do with the split step, I've done a full three-part series all about just the split step, how to time it exactly, how to do it physically, the, the actual technique of it. I'll put a link to that series somewhere right around this video. So that does it for video number two. And I want you now to guess what I'm going to cover in video number three, the third essential element of being successful serving and volleying. Most of you got it correct, what I was going to cover today. Great job with that, by the way. Video three topic is going to be a lot trickier to guess. So I want to see if you can get it. And any questions or comments that you have about today's video, please leave those along with your guess right below in the comments. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention. And I'll see you in video number three, where we're going to wrap up this series all about serving and volleying successfully. Want to serve more like the pros? 
Find out how as I compare Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic during my free five video course. Get it now at freeservecourse.com. That's freeservecourse.com.